Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Seth Rollins shoots on WWE Raw. On WWE Raw, I'm Ollie Davis, this is Luke Owen, welcome to the very festive, we've got a whole ring of Christmas lights edition, the Raw Review episode of Wrestle Ramble, which is of course sponsored by Beer52, that's right, we're sponsored by beer. Go over to beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk to get your free case of craft beer. UK viewers only will be, de- will be sampling this delight in the break, but first off, Seth Rollins opened Raw uh, last night with a, how do you describe it? With his own burn it down bit playing over and over again in his entrance music. Which actually made it seem like more aggressive and more Mm. like, it seemed to amp the crowd up even more. That there was constantly this shout of burn it down and Seth was like really into it and stuff. Like it wasn't like a full entrance for Seth, he was already in the ring. So it was like a real... I hate to use the term hot start because I think it was burn it down, but it was a real hot start to the show. So much so, did you? Because it was in San Diego, and did you see the guy head banging, <laughs> head banging hard to this new rendition of Rollins' entrance music? I don't know if this is going to be permanent, a permanent change. Uh, I'd have to see how it goes. Mm. It I- worked for this though because the essential theme of the promo was Seth saying. Raw's been crap. Yeah, this felt like the WWE writers just sat down and was like, this show has been awful over the last couple of weeks. Everyone has been saying this show has been awful. So let's just go out on Front Street and just say, yeah, this show has been awful, but it's all Baron Corbin's fault, isn't it? And then transfer the heat away from creative onto Baron Corbin. And it's actually led to a lot of people wondering whether this was just WWE's admittance of their show being bad and we're like, we'll try and do it better. Or the other conspiracy theory, one in a million is right as you often put it, is that WWE have been purposefully booking shows badly for the last few weeks so that Seth could have this promo. No, this sounded like, this feels like something that was booked randomly. Yeah, 100%. I don't think Vince was there today. (laughs) <laughs> That's why the okay right he's he's gone. Uh, let's just do everything we want to do for a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, because that's how it seemed. It was like last week where Vince was reportedly backstage and rewrote much of the show last minute. This was a babyface episode, very babyface episode. But within the confines of having a heel general manager, and I thought the balance was struck very very well between making it feel like the heels had dominance of the program. But at the same time, given enough babyface hope, where you're like, hey, let's take these guys on together. I also wonder as well, this show was booked to be a certain way, particularly with the main event that we got, because we're not getting a full brawn match this coming Sunday. And so, because we're not getting a, oh, shock, we're not getting a Baron Corbin TLC match, that's and they're just going to have Braun come out, power slam and be on his way because he's not fully cleared to wrestle, reportedly. That they thought, well, if we do a full TLC match on Raw, that makes up for the fact we're not going to do one on Sunday. Mm, because SmackDown have a TLC match. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That was the A show. Exactly. Yeah. SmackDown's the B show full of losers that all lost at Survivor Series. I would say that's kind of true, though. Raw was a show. The yeah. last couple of weeks, but mm. maybe not the It was like a, a, a bad show is what mm. it has been. Although I thought last week's show, I mean, uh, and Fakedor thought it was broadly fine last week's show, which was a, as we said, a massive step up. Mm. And really, you want, to, you want to have a good show as you go home episode. And this was the go home episode to Sunday's TLC pay-per-view. I thought they did very well. But Seth's promo here, he immediately calls out Baron Corbin and just says, look, Record low. Well, I don't know if he said record low rating. He did say he did say the lowest TV ratings. Yeah. So that and this is this is like weird. Yeah. It's nice to. I don't know whether I did. Did I like it? I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't have done if it was my show and I had record low ratings. I don't think I would have kind of addressed it without explicitly saying it. The last and it's WWE do this a lot. Yeah, where, where they incorporate their own bad writing into future storylines where Shane McMahon came back and said hey Stephanie it's record low ratings by the way those record low ratings were about a million viewers above what we've got now as the average Uh so let me come back and let me save 
WWE. It's it's a weird like mold to be in, and WWE I find it very weird in this sense anyway because they often write they often we they always say. We're a, we're a show for kids. We're a PG show. We're targeting kids. We want to appeal to kids. And then they start these promos where people come out and say, like, our TV ratings are bad. Kids don't care no. that TV ratings are bad. That Those sorts of comments are written for us. Mm. Like, and the people who are watching this show. The people that are sort of monitoring these things. So I, I because he said, the, that's what he led with. He, he said, TV ratings are down. Um, that's a great. Th- I guess you've got the the signed Fox deal now. You don't need to pretend anymore. Well, that's well, that's SmackDown, isn't it? SmackDown. I mean, SmackDown ratings are worse, mm. but they're going over to Raw, so you need to like they'll get better ratings, I guess. But then he said things that actually matter from a kayfabe story perspective, like the boys in the back are really frustrated. The fans are frustrated with you, Baron Corbin, for making this such a bad guy dominated show. You're choking Raw, and I was like, okay, like this is that's the direction I would have gone in. I just wouldn't have had the TV rating stuff. It's just weird. I said in my review that this wasn't so much a patient having a breakthrough in therapy where it's like, this is what I've been doing wrong all this time. It was more like when a monster that's already scary becomes self-aware. And you're like, oh, God, now his capacity for evil knows no bounds. Yeah. So that's what I got. But then he, like the example of the, frust- <laughs> the frustration backstage in the locker room was you've got an amazing tag team like the Revival Heel Act. They mm-hmm. are a heel act. Yep. And you book them in Lucha House Rules matches week after week, which is an unfair thing. I'm like, well, that's what we've been saying, and that's what heel commentator Corey Graves has been saying. And the heels the Revival have been saying. But all the baby faces up until now on the program have said that this is a hilarious... Yes. Hijink. And last week, it was being teased on commentary that it was there was going to be a reveal of a new character. I'm not sure if you saw this, no. because you didn't watch all of Raw last week, because you didn't need to, you weren't here. It was great. It was <laughs> Maybe that's why I like this show so much. Watching it in clip yeah. formats. But they were talking about on commentary, hey, look, someone is making these rules. Someone is allowing Lucha House Party to have these rules. And so me and Fakador were saying, like, well, my, there must be some sort of babyface, like, GM or cruiserweight GM not, that's not Drake Maverick that they're going to introduce to be he's the or she has been the person that has been allowing the Lucha House Party babyface team to have these rules set in place. But then Seth came out and said, no, it was Baron Corbin. Why is Baron Corbin allowing it to happen? Why is Baron Corbin allowing the babyfaces to have the advantage over the heels when he is a heel? Yeah, it's just, it's, like Seth said, stuff that I agree with. Yes. But if I treat this as everything that happens is real within the confines of the show, it is tremendously confusing. <laughs> and uh, but, but that's, by the by, I did actually like all of this. Yeah. I thought Seth cut a great promo. He was so fired up, it was great. Yeah, it re- and the crowd were behind him, and it really did do a good job of putting a lot more heat on Baron Corbin. Like, up until this week, I've been very... Ah, Baron's like I like Baron Corbin as a character, but not to this extent. I don't think he should be pushed in the main events of shows. But it's actually made. I, I at the end of this show, I didn't feel like he felt out of place yeah. in the main event. Just from a story perspective, I, I still don't think he's a main eventer. But uh, yeah, the, the heat transference worked. Yeah, and well done for that. You you went about it in a very weird, weird way. But I think it, I think it worked actually. And you had like uh, Seth saying that you know you made the idiotic choice of putting the belt back on Brock Lesnar. You know, a guy who's never here. We don't have a Universal Championship again on this mm. show. Last time Brock had a match on Raw, it was 2002, and it really did feel like fan frustrations being channeled through Seth Rollins as like the great babyface. And Baron, to you know, in, his, in a brilliant performance, just went, I don't care. And it just sounded like he was the voice of Vince McMahon being channeled through. Vince McMahon was essentially behind him, hand up his yeah. ass, operating the mouth, going like, I don't care. What an image. <clears throat> He's got big forearms as well. That would <laughs> rip someone open. Mm. Uh, but the, the Baron Corbin did an interview recently where he said that Vince loves Corbin's general manager role. Of course he does. He's got snazzy waistcoats. But, but yeah, it's like that's what... Um, you can but Vince is probably like, oh, because you are my avatar. Yeah, exactly. I'm too old to do this now. You are my big blue man. Yeah, you are the new Vince McMahon. Yeah. You're the new Mr. McMahon character. You're just as good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this uh, this Seth goaded 
Baron Corbin into a TLC match for the main event. And Corbin was like, nah. And Seth did the usual, come on, chicken or... C- coward. He coward. Go, coward. Fickle. Coward. Coward. Fickle. He just said... Ca- ca- <laughs> so Baron Corbin kept being like, no, 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 I'm not a coward. He could, coward. Coward. Which coward. was good. It was good. It, it was good. And it goaded the heel into accepting this match. So we got a TLC main event on the show. That's why I think we're not getting one on Sunday. Well, usually I wouldn't like that. I don't like it when these are meant to be smart wrestlers. And unless you're AJ Styles, who we all know his main character flaw is, he's an emotional hothead. <laughs> it's, it's in every one it's of his every matches. Every week. one of his matches and promos. It's definitely always <laughs> there as a character trait. It's so consistent. <laughs> uh, is Baron Corbin didn't just go for that and was like yeah alright then you, I'll, I'll show you I'm not a coward he went yeah okay and your intercontinental title's on the line mm. I'm like all of a sudden I was like okay this is an interesting wrinkle going into Sunday because I could totally see Seth losing the title because you can get Seth and Dean by themselves because the, they don't need the title the IC title can go to Braun Strowman I even started writing a joke for my review that's like because that match needed another thing on the line <laughs> Now you've got the Intercontinental ti- title in there anyway. Yeah, because the Baron match has got... If Braun wins, he gets a Universal Championship match at Royal Rumble. If Baron wins, he becomes uh, the permanent Raw GM. What you wanted to then do is also be for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and Alicia Fox. <laughs> Just someone lying around. Yeah. Uh, and then this paid off. I'd like That's a good main event. That is a... A very exciting main event, I would say. TLC match, Seth Rollins is in it for the IC title. Possibility of a title change. Seth Rollins in a TLC match for the IC title. That is an exciting thing. But as I've said, I love Baron Corbin as a character, but I'm not interested in seeing him wrestle. Mm. I thought, um, like, I did enjoy Corbin in the resulting match, but another layer was added because my new favourite thing on Raw... Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! (laughs) ...is... Heath Slater. Heath Slater, of course, uh, won his match against Rhino last week. This was a Baron Corbin thing he made them do. And I'm just recapping this for my own benefit more than anyone else because I didn't really see the the show last week. And Corbin was like, hi, you won. You don't lose your job like Rhino just has. Of course, they were tag team brothers sometimes. That's also a consistent thing that's never changed. Mm -hmm. And... You, but now you'll have to become a referee. Yes, you've got the lowly position of being a referee. But he's Baron Corbin's almost personal referee. And he's in a position at the moment, clearly the Barons told him on camera, and they did a very good job of putting this over on commentary, that he's afraid for his job. He needs to have this job, because if he doesn't have this job, then he doesn't have a job at all. So he has to do what Baron tells him, or do what he thinks that Baron wants him to do. And it creates a really interesting dynamic, particularly in the um, Leo Rush Elias mm. match earlier in the show, and then here. And it was got to the point, and they structured this match so well that I thought, Baron's winning. Yes. Baron's yeah, going to win the totally belt. I thought that. I yeah. totally fell for it. Um, and the other thing with Heath is he's got a long history of putting over how many kids he's got. So you, we're already invested in Heath's livelihood. Yeah. And now that's on the line. I'm, I'm super... And Heath's performance, I've always really, really liked Heath Slater. Beyond just, I think, a lot of people's ironic appreciation for him mm-hmm. and the 3MB days. I think he's a very, very good solid wrestler a great seller and comedy timing and facials wise he's amazing but i've only ever seen that in a comedy way here as the sort of beaten down not beaten down but like morally conflicted baby face i've got to do this to feed my kids but i'm i'm having to go against my morality i thought he's the way he communicated that with his face yeah. was flawless. I thought he was really, really mm. great in this role. And he had some. He had a, the big spot of this match really was where Seth accidentally hit. Um, uh, did he hit him with a chair by accident? Um, yeah, mean, he accidentally hit Heath with a chair. Seth did, and then he goes up to climb the ladder after hitting a frog splash uh, onto Corbin through the table on the outside. Goes to climb the ladder. Heath stops him. Heath stops him from winning, and and that was where I was like, what oh. Mm. Baron's winning here and then eventually Seth overcomes both Heath and Baron to win the match I thought it was a really really well booked match yeah because just, just, yeah, Heath's helping Baron up yeah yeah Heath and it like you can see his face is like I don't want to do this I do not want to be this way I... and that when Seth stops Baron climbing up there and they him and Heath have this face off Heath's, Heath's kind of like resigned like I deserve it. Yeah. So S- Seth super kicks him, curb stomps Baron, climbs up to retain the title. And that's like the the frog splash to the outside through the table. That's a pay-per-view level spot. 
And on top of that, you had a bunch of other things like the the three dives through the ropes. Baron caught the last one, put Seth through a table. Yeah, uh, I thought I thought it was a really good match. Yeah, my only complaint I had about the match was sort of connected to that finish, I suppose, hmm. which is that so uh, Rollins. Super kicks Heath out of the ring, stomps Corb, and then goes up and wins the belt. And then the bell rings. And I'm like, well, who called for the bell? Because Heath's the referee. There's no other referee down there. Maybe it was just like, he didn't see it. <laughs> he was just off camera by the ring apron pointing his finger. Because then it raises the question, like, if you don't need a referee there to signal for the bell to be rung, why do you need a ref at all? Because mm. JoJo's just there to do it for everyone. I that That's a good point. Um, but I thought I was more caught up in the huh that's clever because he's won a match here where he didn't need the referee to count it for him mm. but yes you're right the, the the bell sounding is difficult and then Dean Ambrose comes out on the top of the ramp and stares down Seth and usually I'm of the position where I want these big cliffhanger moments for go home shows so I have to tune in for TLC but I really I think this is a very solid B pay per view go home angle. I agree. Seth Rollins has won this great, like, well, great, very good main event, and he looks really strong. Dean Ambrose comes out. I'm gonna face you. I'm like, well, yeah. Now, now I'm into this. Yeah. Like having people lose and baby faces lose all the time. We, I, I feel like we have been worked over in a tag team match. Yes. As viewers, and now we've had the hope spot last week, and this was the hot tag. Hopefully. Yeah. Absolutely. Hope so. The Wrestle Ramble is, of course, sponsored by beer. Go over to beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk to get your free case of craft beer, UK viewers only. Mm. Yes, this is Sleeping Limes from the Wild Beer Company. I actually had this one over the weekend. I was quite fond of it. My wife was not. I think it's very much an acquired taste because it's uh, oh, wow. very much it's with limes and lime and sea salt. Uh, clean and crisp with refreshing tangy limes and a Moorish briny finish. It originally took inspiration from Sleeping Lemons and the beautiful preserved lemons. Wild... Uh, sorry, Lemons Wild Users. But the idea developed into a cleaner beer, taking the Corona and Lime Wedge and stepping it up a notch. Mm. Mm. It's not to my tastes. No, as I, I said, much I prefer a darker beer. I think it's very much an acquired taste, this one. But it's one of those, it's not unpleasant. It's like, a, mm. it's a curious taste where you're like, huh. Yeah. So that's what lime and salt would taste like <laughs> yeah. in a beer form. It is very Corona in that mm. sense. But then again, I don't like lime. If I'm going to have a Corona, I don't like lime in it because I want a beer, not a cocktail. Yeah, I just squeeze the lime juice into to open wounds usually. Mm-hmm. Ha ha, it's a raw review looking jack, man. So after that pretty good opening, I would say, it was a really good opening segment with Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin, we got a tag title match right out the way. Well, I thought this was actually very smart booking in for WWE, not for WWE, but on WWE's part, credit to them, is that they essentially what they did in the opening segment was set up that there is a title match later on tonight. The very next segment, titles change hands, which sets you up for the rest of the night. Oh, Titles can change hands mm. on Raw. We might get a title change later in the show. Try and convince people to stick around for the rest of the show and watch it because there's always that massive third hour drop off. This show really did feel like it was designed to make people stick around for that third hour. What a novel concept. I man. know. It's crazy, isn't it? But encouraging people, enticing viewers to sit through the entirety of your show. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's really groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Plus, I, I, would, I thought you were going to go a different route. I thought... Because the opening segment was Seth Rollins saying how bad Raw has been. Didn't say booking-wise, but he said it's frustrating for the fans. And I don't think there's anything that's been more frustrating and widely critically panned than Drake Maverick pissing his pants and then pissing on Bobby Roode's robe. Which then builds into this uh, Chad Gable and Bobby Roode taking on Drake Maverick and AOP in an AOP house rules match. Yes, yeah. And it's for the tag title, so you're like... Okay, all these, we're voice, we've heard your concerns, and here we're course correcting in the very next segment. Yeah. Because what happened, uh, They it was a very short match because I think a lot of it was in the commercial break. Yeah, it was very much, um, although Rude and Gable now have matching gear and robes, so you know they're being taken seriously as a team now. I like that. I thought they looked really good in the robes together. Yeah. Not so much in the trunks. <laughs> yeah. But I like them in the robes together. Gable is just so likeable. And Rude is a really solid promo. But after the match, they just did a backstage interview thing. 
Gable just blew him out the water in terms of just being natural. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And yeah, and you're right. This wasn't like this wasn't much of a match because it was very much like AOP dominated. But and I've seen a few people say like, ah, oh, this was a really smart move by WWE by having Drake Maverick be in there. Drake Maverick was the one that took the pin. He essentially. AOP did all the work, then he got in and he was like, wah, 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 I'm Drake Maverick, oh, I'm going to do a glorious pin, blah, blah, blah. and then it's rolled up and, and they lose the tag belts. And that in itself is kind of right, but at the same time it makes AOP look like complete dunderheads, because why on earth would you <coughs> tag in Drake Maverick? Yeah, presumably because you thought you had... I mean, you just hit the super collider on route. Doesn't matter, he's not I a... I know. In, th- in this world, he is not a wrestler. Yeah. He is their manager. You wouldn't tag in Paul Ellering... When you're like these massive behemoths, you do all the legwork, he just stands on the ringside. I thought it made them look uh, quite silly to be like, oh, okay. And no, it wasn't even at the ending. They did it throughout the match. Mm. They kept being like, better tag in Drake now. We need to, I need to have a rest. Yeah, it, it makes Maverick look like the boss of this situation when really you want them to be... You don't want that kind of dynamic too heavily enforced. I, uh, I'm treating... Because overall, this is just... This is just a disaster. <laughs> this is just the cherry on top of a disaster because it's been a terrible feud. You've now scuppered Gable and Rude's first tag team win as just like, oh, we need to really reset the tag team division. Let's just put the titles on someone else. That's not I. That's not what I wanted for Rude and Gable. I wanted them to have this long underdog, underdog story win and then Rude turns on Gable down the line. But that's been undermined now and you've also undermined AOP. So I'm just treating this as... It's over. It's a uh, well. Is well, it though? I automatic I think, rematch clause. I think that they're not going to have a match at TLC. So next week, might do next. God, that's a long card already. <laughs> next week, soft reset. Drake Maverick's nowhere to be seen. Oh, interesting. This, this is such a shame because Drake Maverick, Rockstar Spud, is fantastic. It certainly is. But you, WWE, you somehow gave him something that even he couldn't make work. Yeah. And he can, he honestly, that's what I always thought about him. He can make anything work. And you broke him, WWE. Yeah. So thank, thank God they, they have an insurance policy where he can just go back to 205 Live and continue being that character, which is a, a success. But I, th- I hope next week that's AOP and Maverick over. It also means as well, like yesterday, I recorded um, one of our, we're doing all of our Christmas videos in advance, and I recorded a video about NXT call-ups, uh, and I talked about like, AOP have only done really well because they won the tag team titles. Well, mate, look what's happened here, now I've got to go back and re-record something, I've got to add an oh, addendum onto that you video. You don't have to, you could just say they won the tag team titles, that's not been oh, mate, written this out is, of history. This is YouTube. They'll be the first thing that people, every comment will just be, oh, actually I thought they lost them at Raw. So do you want to, do you want a fact? I'd love a fact. I'll give you a fact. Both Gable and Jason Jordan have both been Raw Tag Team Champions now, not with each other. That is a fact. Fact. That is a fact. Next up, we got Natalia cutting a promo on Ruby Riot. <laughs> and here's a fact for you. Basing a feud on broken sunglasses <laughs> is going to sound silly. No matter how, and I thought Natty did a good promo here. She teared up a bit. She's talking about the real life death of her father, which happened only a few months ago, Jim the Anvil Neidhart. But when you say you destroyed his legacy when you broke his sunglasses, that takes me out of it. Mate, there was a line in here where she said, uh, Ruby disrespected my father. Ruby's been going around here claiming that the only reason I'm in this business is because of my last name. And I was like, has she? Have, have we seen one promo from Ruby Wright where she has said that? They've never done this. All they've done is they broke her sunglasses one week, then put her through a table the following week. There's nothing else to this feud. It's like, this is good stuff. This is good motivation Excellent for Excellent motivation. What, do it before, like, do it as the whole thing. Where has it been? Yeah. It was, it really did feel like they suddenly looked at this match and was like, oh, dang, we put this on the main show. We better give it something, I guess. Can you go out there and cut a five-minute promo to, like, essentially build a whole new story? And I'm just like, that's not what you said. (laughs) Something doesn't feel right about this. And I've, I mean, granted, I watch this show on my own. Like, at five o'clock in the morning, I get up and I watch this show. I have a cup of tea and I eat my toast and I watch this show on my own. And there was a moment when Natalia said, goes, 
you said that the only reason I'm in this business, the only reason I'm in this company is for, because of my last name. That's not true at all. Remember the Montreal screw job? And I just loudly shouted out, oh, F off. Mm-hmm. Loudly as I possibly could. Yeah. I'm like, why are we bringing this up now? What's that got to do with anything? Because it people, like, people, like, tune out sometimes <laughs> and they hear words and I recognize that word and they cheer. So maybe that was it. Uh, I, I just... Uh, I thought saying you destroyed his legacy when you broke his sunglasses just made it sound like they were haunted sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, if only they were. It's, I, it's, yeah, yeah, that would be a, a really fun feud. But then, again, we got something that was good at this. Because this whole segment, like, if this was five minutes worth of promo time that was, like, three weeks worth of storyline just condensed into this five-minute promo. Mm. And at the end of it, I was like... Actually, I'm quite looking forward to this match on Sunday now because the Riot Squad come out. Ruby sends the other two to the back, but they've got a mystery table that they want to unveil. And it's like, I'm going to put you through this table and I can't wait to put you through this table. And they unveil it and it's got a big picture of Jim the Anvil Neidhart on it. And everyone goes, oh, that's low. And Natty's crying in the ring. It's like, you're a disgrace to your family. And it's like, and this table is the gift that keeps on giving. I thought Ruby cut a really, really good heel promo. Granted, I would have thought that Natalia should have been a bit more angry about it rather than just sort of standing in the ring going like, that is mean. I've, I've written that here. I was like, what? Are the, are the ring ropes electrified? <laughs> Run at her. Like, this her. is really nasty stuff. <laughs> Go and beat her up. Chase her off. No. I, uh... I, I actually went lower than WWE. Uh, they, I still think this was a tad exploitative because I think you should only use stuff like this when it's a really hot feud already. And this is like to use a real life death just for a filler feud and the crowd aren't really into it. Like if the crowd were actually reacting, I'd be like, yeah, you got a good pop out of it. But the crowd aren't really reacting to it. Well, yeah, and that's because like Ruby keeps saying like everyone knows how close you are or how close you were with your father. I was like, well, I imagine people who watch Total Divas mm. know, but like yeah. the the regular audience having a Scooby Doo. But when she um before she unveiled the table because it was under a cover, I thought they've got the coffin there. <laughs> 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 just like I'm not, I'm not saying that's funny. I'm saying that's awful. But that's where I thought they were going. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, oh, that's not that bad actually in comparison. I thought it was going to be lamer. I'll be honest with you. Mm. I thought it was going to be a table with like Jim's name written in condiments or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Written in mustard. Uh, but this was a lean segment. I thought this was over really quickly. <laughs> and like usually WWE promo things go 15 minutes or 10 15 minutes. But this was very lean. Mm-hmm. So well done. And like you said it did it is an undercard feud and even though it is a bit exploitative they have made something of this. And it's a gimmick match. It's the it's the T of TLC. Mm. We're not getting a chairs match by all accounts unless we get one added to tonight's show. Maybe it'll be a Randy Ray match maybe. Potentially. Potentially. Um Drew McIntyre cut a great promo well Dolph got a promo before that oh did he yeah it was a cell phone promo oh that's that just went over my head yeah I think he essentially said uh, that he's not a good guy he's not a bad guy Um, what's that going well he just said he goes I'm Dolph Ziggler Mm. and I don't need Finn Balor because like everyone was saying that oh Dolph uh, turned babyface last week but apparently he didn't he's just I mean why have momentum just cut, just cut, <laughs> just cut that off, and just say I'm actually nothing. Yeah, yeah. Don't, uh, don't invest in me either way. Or maybe just trying to be a. They, they, they've seen Becky Lynch, and everyone needs to be a tween. And well, that's going to say that's your, that's the hold you fall down, isn't it? It's like, mm. well, this is successful, so let's just do it across everyone. It's the the Hollywood mentality. It's like this one film was really successful. Make me a film that's just like it, and do everything that that film did, but with a different background mm. and then that film's not as quite successful I'm like well those films just aren't successful are <laughs> yeah they? yeah uh, but d- afterwards drew cut a really solid promo in yeah. the ring with i think charlie caruso she was all over this show yeah so i'm just she, saying she's not the other one who i think is dasher oh, i'm pretty I'm pr- dasher. no dasher was doing some of the backstage ones i think this might have uh, been charlie i thought they were the same person <laughs> oh my god so okay all my notes are confused now if I'm talking about a backstage interviewer. No, no, I think Charlie did some of the backstage ones as well. Ah, they look way too similar. White girls. They all look the same. <laughs> white, white brunette girls. Yeah. Give them personality. It won't hurt them. And it mm. won't hurt anyone else either. And uh, I just, I thought, so he said like he's the last man in WWE and... Stealing Silas Young's gimmick. Yeah, and, and then he like 
shouted at the at the the fans, being like, "You might not like me, but respect me." Yeah. I just thought, "Yeah, like it's that it's that actual." It's a heel who can back up what he's saying, and yeah. he's got like he does have a moral code in a way, however warped it is. I, I I think Drew's fantastic, and I love the way that he sort of said, "Yeah, I mean, I lost last week, but no man stays undefeated." Mm. You know, Andre the Giant yeah. was undefeated. The Undertaker lost his WrestleMania streak. I mean, he didn't bring it up because it said Asuka, you know, didn't keep her undefeated streak. He said sometimes you've got to lose, but it's what you do after that that counts. He's going to tag team with Naomi now. <laughs> A mix match challenge. Oh, well, I mean, they're changing everyone else on that show. Yeah. May, Drew, Drew may as well go into it. If you win, you get the number 30 spot and an all expenses paid vacation to a destination <laughs> of your choice. Uh, uh, I thought these two had a great match. They They had like five minutes of actual TV time and it started really hot with them just doing some strikes and it goes for a break, comes back. And both guys are like laying down like they've been in a 20 minute war. But somehow, yeah. like, I, I bought into that. Yeah. And uh, like, because th- there's a bit where Dolph went for a super kick but just collapsed. Really great way of selling fatigue. There was such a close 10 count spot with yeah, Drew on the outside. It was playing off the one from last week. Ah, right. I missed that one. Yeah. So, like, because Balor drop kicked um, Drew on the outside into the barricade and he just got in at nine. And that's when Dolph hit the super mm. kick and pinned him. So they're playing off that finish here where he just got in. Dolph went for the super kick, but this time collapsed because of the, the beatdown ah. that he received from Drew. And uh, so that was very good, actually. Yeah. The, and there was a, a second rope air raid crash from Drew on Dolph, which. To, to, to the announcer's credit, they played up really well. I was like, oh, he's... Yeah, Finley Slam. Finley Slam, the the driver thing. <laughs> which uh, And it looked like Dolph really, really got hurt. He there. landed really oh. hard on his arm. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a flat back bump in the end. He landed like on his side. It looked like it sucked. Yeah. And then uh, he hit the zigzag out of nowhere for a really good near fall. And then Drew hit the Claymore out of nowhere to get the win. I thought it was a solid, solid match. And all that stuff, like that sounds... Recap wise, like a 10 15 minute match. That was all in five minutes of TV time. Yeah. Uh, so it, it felt like. And it was just like another really good segment. This this show flew by for me. Yeah, it really did. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was really good. Um, but yeah, D- Drew keeps beating down Dolph afterwards and the referees tell him to go away, which again gets over Baron's mates. Mm. They're on top of Raw right now. Uh, so I like that. Then we got probably the joint dud. <laughs> Of the show, which was Bailey taking on Alicia Fox. This match, right? So Sasha Banks comes out first, and then Bailey comes out. So I over go. Okay, so it's Bailey and Sasha Banks, and then they said, and uh, Alicia Fox will be in action next. And I was like, okay, so it'll be Alicia Fox and Dana Brooke, maybe. Yeah. Then Jinder comes out. And I'm like, is Jinder in the match? And then Alicia Fox came. And I was like, is there? Does she have a teddy partner? And they're like. And it's a singles match between Bailey and Alicia Fox. And I'm like, oh, okay. My notes are well wrong then. I think they just say, everyone go out there. We'll decide who's facing who Eventually. when we come back from break. Yeah. So this was where we announced that Finn Balor, who'd been taken off live events over the weekend, um, has also been taken out of Mixed Match Challenge. So that's just, it's another casualty of... Mixed match challenge. I've actually got uh, the whole like list. Like anyone of, cares. I've got the whole list of people that have been replaced mm. in mixed match challenge. If I just bring up my new script, fill in for me while I get this. Uh, oh, excellent. So I thought you were actually. <laughs> this is terrible filling in for podcasts. I was going to say for the podcast. Come on, mate. Uh, where are we? Here we go. So. First off, um, uh, Alexa Bliss was replaced by Ember Moon with her team with Braun Strowman. Kevin Owens replaced Bobby, Ro- uh, or Bobby Roode replaced Kevin Owens in his team with Natalia. Mickey James replaced Sasha Banks in her team. Uh, Jeff Hardy replaced AJ Styles in his team with Charlotte Flair. Kurt Hawkins replaced Braun Strowman in what was meant to be his team with Alexa Bliss, but ended up being his team with Ember Moon, and is now Ember Moon and Kurt Hawkins. And now Balor's been taken out as well. Is, is Charlotte still? In it as well. She didn't make it through to the semi-finals because okay. the semi-finals were supposed to be Balor and Bailey versus Jinder and Alicia for, for Raw, and then the SmackDown side was Carmella and r Truth versus Asuka and the Miz, and then those two. Then the finals take place at TLC with the winners getting the number thirty spots uh, at the Royal Rumble, as well as that all expenses paid vacation to a destination of their choice. It's just 
absolute lunacy. Which, like, and when you start this, when they start this tournament and they announce, like, you're getting the number 30 winners and you've got, like, these names like Charlotte and you've got Asuka and you've got AJ Styles, you've got these big names in the tournament, Braun Strowman, you're like, oh, okay, so they really are taking this seriously then. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like, yeah, Jinder and Alicia are like now, they made it to the f- semi finals. What? They were like zero for four. How did they make it to this point? Uh, because no one knows what the teams are anymore. <laughs> it's that old philosophical argument about, you know, I've got this broom, I've had it for 20 years, but I've changed the handle five times and the brush seven times. Is it the same broom? Yeah. Are you, these the same teams? You say it's a philosophical point. It's a joke from Only Fools and Horses. That doesn't make it any less of a philosophical <laughs> point. So, yeah. So, Mixed Match Challenge is it's still <coughs> going on. Um, and it, I'd imagine now, based that you get the uh, the destination, the holiday destination of your choice, that Carmella oh. and R-Truth are winning. Because wacky backstage skits can happen. Uh, so, how does Apollo Crews factor into all this? So, he's replacing Finn Balor, because Balor right. is... So, Balor is not injured. He's According to PW Insider, he's unwell. Mm. Uh, he picked up a bug while they were over in South America, so he was sent home. Uh, but it, they say that they're expecting him to be fine for TLC, which is why they were still advertising his match with Drew. Good to hear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Bailey and Alicia Fox were having a match. The Singh brothers got up on the ring apron. This brought out Apollo Crews, even though Sasha Banks was out there. Some scuffles happened, and Apollo used Banks as a weapon at yes. one point. And a lot of people have screen capped this and sent it across to us with everyone saying, oh, you'll enjoy this. Because he's got his hand close to her vagina. Has he? Yes. Oh, well, I th- I'm sure it was a heat of the moment thing and not a, a Me Too scandal. So after that, I mean, Bailey won. Oh, Bailey won, yeah. Uh, not that that matters. Dean Ambrose gets a promo backstage with Charlie Caruso and or Dasha Fuentes. I think this one was... I've written Charlie. So I've I'm, written Charlie. I think we're going to go with Charlie. <laughs> I, I used to be really good at these. I take one week out. <laughs> Um, but Dean's there with his Bane jacket, and even though I, I've just I've just got to make peace with this, they're not going with the really fascinating, deep, complex character he had after the initial heel turn, and now he's something different. But Dean's delivery and performance is so good, it's you know you can't complain too much, I suppose. And well, his, I have though. And but. his uh, Del Boy coat is very nice. Oh, it's the Bane coat. I wonder. You see, it looks like a. It looks. It looks like the Bane coat when he has the gas mask on. When he takes off, he looks like Del Boy. <laughs> uh, God, two only fools and horses mentioned. That's this what show. people come to this show for. Uh, Laurie made a big break reference in his weekend video. It's only a game show. Sure, Andy Datsun had never heard of that show. Grant, I mean, he is like I mean, like fifteen years younger. Mm, Datsun than Datsun was born three years ago. <laughs> and Charlie plays a video. Which was awkward. She's yeah. like, you know, you, we say all these things, but what do you think about what Roman would think? And Dean goes, Roman, who cares? And then they play a recap package of, you know, Roman's announcement, Dean turning that night. And I was like, oh my God, what a heel turn this was. Yeah. It was so emotional. And and then they kind of cut out all the bits. Of the germaphobe stuff. The, the stupid stuff. And then it heart, like, jumped forward in time to the jacket promo from last week. And then, I, yeah, just it, I was like, oh, that's a, shame. <laughs> that's a shame. And then it cuts back, and Ambrose just walks off. Yeah, doesn't answer, which it's, kind of kind of hints to me that he does feel some regret and and heartbreak. But he's he's just yeah. venting. I would like to think that because they cut out the hide and seek stuff and they cut out the germaphobe stuff, that they're dropping that element of his character, and they are going back to that original heel turn conflicted that's why he sort of walked away from the promo package because i'd imagine this is going to be the video package that's played before tl their tlc match this sunday mm. and i hope it is and i really i've said this before about wb but because they're so good at doing video packages i wish they did this more show you those hype packages on raw where you've got a lot of eyes watching it to try and make people excited about those matches and pff, i don't know order the network mm. or like uh, maybe for the ruby riot natalia if you just have Loads of clips they filmed this week of Ruby going around saying, Natalia's only here because of her last name. Well, or that, I bet you it's uh, she's probably been doing it all on the Twitter or maybe mm. on Instagram. On the Twitter. Uh, apologies if you can hear any drilling. It's just the way it is around here sometimes. Yep, we thought it would be done by now. Uh, so next up, another good segment. Like another, Elias is in the ring. He 
He says that Bobby Lashley has been trashing your local sports team, San Diego. <laughs> And I was like, whoa. It's meta your local sports team. This is so weird. It doesn't it doesn't seem right. No, I know it's weird, isn't it? I went like I do I liked it, but I wish they just wouldn't go near that. Because yeah. I just think you're the guy that got the nuclear heat two months ago in Seattle. Well it doesn't work as well when you say like, Oh little birdie has told me that this other person has said this bad thing about mm. your local sports team. Because last week he did a your local sports team reference, but it was a good thing. Mm. It was like your local sports team is very good. So maybe just do that. Yeah, yeah. But Vince bloody loves a your local sports team reference and Elias is about the only person who can do it. He does a, a pretty fun song about how Lashley sucks. It was like a, just a he played it straight but the last line was Nah, I'm thinking about Bobby Lashley being rubbish. Yeah. So that was funny. But then Heath Slater comes down as a referee. This was the first instalment of the Heath Slater storyline since last week. And he's uh, yeah, he just looks so conflicted and beaten down. But this is Leo Rush versus Elias. Yeah, this really was the 205 Live Managers getting action this yeah. week. And Leo was thrown around by Elias. Pretty much. Just treated like... And I got, part of me was like, oh, I wish... Rush could have done more of his athletic stuff, and then you could kind of build him as a featured performer on Raw. He's a manager, man. Yeah. Well, manager, he's a hype man, sorry. But then, like, I thought he is, like you said, he is a manager, and at the moment, that's not the best use of him. So, And he got a few cool bits, but Elias dominates it. Elias has it one with a sit down powerbomb. Heath's going to count the fall, but Bobby Lashley runs him, breaks it up. Heath's going to go, okay, it's a DQ then. And Bobby's like, no, mate. No, it's not. And he intimidates him, and Heath is just fantastic here. Uh, Leo goes outside, gets the guitar, some payback from last week when Elias smashed the guitar over, rushes back, and he hits Elias with it, pins him for the win. Yeah. Heath may be made to count the fall. And that sets up uh, a match for this Sunday. It's going to be Elias versus Bobby Lashley in a ladder match, but with a guitar hung above the ring, and it's the first person to pull down the guitar and use it as a weapon. So it's a pinfall match, but you can use the guitar if you get it. So it's a guitar on a on a string match. Yeah, it's a guitar on a, a pole guitar match. on a pole. Yes, yeah, rule wise. But it's not TLP. No. Or TPC, I suppose. TLG. <laughs> Well, Tables, no, ladders, guitars. Well, no, because the ladder, I oh, suppose it is still, because it would be TGC, because it might do a chairs match. Maybe TCPG? No, we've got... We've got a table We've match. got a tables match. There's, yeah. Is there no ladder? There's a there's, ladder there's match. A ladder match, but there's, it's technically a guitar match. Yeah. So, Oh, I see. Yeah. So you've got to replace the L. But there's no chairs at the moment. TLG. TLG. That's what this is called now. Tables, ladders, guitars. Oh, my. Oh, and it worked so well when they added stairs to it that one year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after that, we get Heath Slater backstage. He's trying to go home after one match. Well, it's brilliant. He, was just, he, he wasn't trying to go home. He just said, I'm going home. I, yeah, and yeah, I loved yeah. it. It was basically just like, I'm done with this. I'm done. He's like, I'm going home. And he's like, no, no, no. You've got one more match, mate. Yeah, that was Baron saying that. Yeah. And then throughout the night, we got a Ronda Rousey, Nia Jax face-to-face segment with moderator Alexa Bliss. That is not a segment I was looking forward to. Nope. But maybe do it. If you've advertised it all night, because Alexa Bliss is there just to hold a microphone. Like, what is going on she with didn't her? She didn't even hold the microphone because Nia took it off her, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah. She and then she, And then she, essentially, she played the Renee Young. She thanos into nowhere. I think, I obviously, Bliss is injured. She cut, She's not medically cleared to compete. Hopefully, she will be. But she's great. Why are you just using her as background props? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, man, she could have been involved in that mixed match challenge nonsense from mm. earlier. It could have been worse. Uh, but uh, Nia, Jax come, yeah, so Nia Jax comes out with Tamina, takes the mic off Alexa Bliss, and then just does a load of stuff about Ronda Rousey. She she got fiery near the end. She does, but I, I, we've said this before, but her heat has diminished since Survivor Series. Mm. And like even when she's now saying, like, I knocked out everyone's favourite Becky Lynch, no one reacts to it anymore. No. I don't think anyone buys into... Nia as a viable contender for the Raw Women's Championship. Or they, they, uh, so I've written here, this is what I think I've cracked it. <clears throat> they were never booing Nia Jax because Nia Jax isn't over in the way WWE wanted her to be. 
they were reverse cheering Becky Lynch. Oh, I see. That's that's so interesting. So all yeah. the booing wasn't all oh, Nia Jax, we hate you. It's like, yeah. oh, well, the Becky Lynch isn't here. Well, my theory was that the crowd are booing heavily, but uh, Tamina is sucking it all up <laughs> and just being the, the heat vacuum this vortex <laughs> of heat. <laughs> Don't need any of that, mate. <laughs> Crickets, that's what you're after. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the... Oh, you've, you've put me off there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Nia Jax got got angry and firing just started randomly yelling bits in a kind of uncharismatic Nicolas Cage way it, 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 it is a very Nicolas Cage performance it did make me like take note because mm. after a while I did find myself just drifting off and then she'd go like Bap! and I'd be like oh yeah. crikey okay yeah take a note about that Nia Jax isn't a good in ring promo no but although I did say she's better as a heel because she feels less ba 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 when she's yeah. a baby face but as a heel she does feel like she could be more uh, 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 mm. uh, 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 instead which actually feels like there's more inflection to it so Ronda comes out and uh, like says well I'm not here for a face to face I'm here for a fight so maybe it was for the best it was, but there was no face to face yeah because this was brilliant because Ronda didn't come out smiling and glad handing handing out gloves to little girls at rings so I know she came out with a mm. pissed off look on her face so like I'm not here to talk I'm here to fight and the crowd Way. And I was like, yes, brilliant. Let's stop having her just come down to the ring and smiling, even when she's been like brutalized and had her neck trapped in a chair or whatever it was at Survivor Series. And then coming out the following night going like, woohoo, I'm Ronda Rousey. Ooh, ooh, or act- little, or actually, talk, I actually, yeah, that is a bit owie, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Tamina and Nia Jax then completely surround the ring. <laughs> By being there on was, opposite sides. There was no escape yeah. for, for Ronda Rousey. Thankfully, Ember Moon came down to... And even if Ember Moon had got up on the ring, there still would have been one more way mm. to escape. Uh, but she came out in Ronda's defence. And this turned into an Ember Moon versus Tamina match, which uh, I'm pretty sure I blacked out. Well, I mean, I've got one note, which is Tamina threw one of the worst super kicks I've ever seen. Mm. Ember wins. Yeah, Ember won because Jax got on the apron. Ronda kind of simultaneously pulled her down and threw her over the barricade yeah. at the same time. And that was enough so Ember could hit the Eclipse and win. You remember that um, Adam Cole super kick on Ricochet? Uh, oh, NXT? mid-air. Yeah, yeah, that mid one. That's essentially what Tamina tried to do here, but it was the complete opposite of, of how cool that looked. Uh, uh, and then we got a Lars Sullivan video Because <laughs> <laughs> Lars Sullivan is no longer coming. Lars Sullivan is lurking. Ooh. <laughs> That is the most Vince McMahon thing. Yeah. He's not coming. He's lurking. He's too big a guy to lurk. <laughs> I think a lurking is more of a diminutive stature. But he's enormous. I love One doesn't lurk when you're that big. <laughs> you impose. He's imposing in the background. <laughs> he's lurking. Yeah. How th- How is that supposed to sound threatening? Oh, he's a freak. He's destroying. He's lurking. In the 50s, it would. Oh, maybe. It would be disturbing, maybe. When people didn't, you know, do top rope moves, <laughs> the this was interesting from another reason. I thought he directly referenced TLC. He said TLC is this Sunday, and no matter what happens on it, my like my debut essentially is going to be the bigger thing. Uh, not not necessarily saying it's going to be on Sunday, but I thought all oh, that is, yep, it's not the same promo. It, yeah, it could very well be because. Um, I mean, we've had this promo for a few old weeks now. I mean, it's been slightly different each time. Now he's lurking. Mm. But uh, maybe he'll just be... Lur- maybe we'll just see him in the background shots <laughs> at TLC and backstage segments. Or he'll be like in the crowd eating popcorn, just like lurking a, around. Like the drifter. <laughs> exactly. He's the, the lurker, Lars Sullivan. Because <laughs> the freak's a terrible name. Yeah, and the lurker is so much better. Yeah, the lurk accident. <laughs> lurk Sullivan? Yep, <Yeah>, lurk Sullivan. <laughs> Well, then it was the very good Baron Corbin Seth Rollins main event. Yeah. It was a good show. I like really enjoyed the show. And yeah. we've we've made fun of it a lot, but it was. But it's in jest, man. Yeah, this was this was a very enjoyable episode of Raw. Yeah, thumbs up uh, from me. It, it was really entertaining. It was fun. Yeah, uh, really, and, really was. And I I thought it struck a good balance. Feuds progressed. There was some really great moments. The Heath Slater stuff is really really engaging and. I want to see TLC. Yep, and that's exactly what a go home show should do. I'm I thought it was a thumbs up show. I need to correct my statement there. I want to see the raw matches at TLC now. I already wanted to see the SmackDown ones. I was sold on those long ago. But Raw, I was like, well who ca- who cares? Are there only two do they only re- announce two of them on this show? 
Because there's Brian and AJ and the triple threat for the SmackDown women's. And there's the tag match. But they didn't... Re- I'm guessing that's on the kickoff show. Because I don't think they... End, they don't, when they were going through the cards, mm. I don't think they said, what's on... Is there another match? Well, we'll, we'll do that tomorrow when uh, SmackDown's done. Of course, it's Wrestle League as well. Oh, of course, the all-important... All, all of our predictions will be tallied up over the course of three months to crown the first Wrestle League champion. And we've got, there are so many shows in this first batch that we're doing this because we've got TLC, we've got Wrestle Kingdom, we've got NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, we've got, uh, Phoenix rather, we've got the Rumble. TNA Homecoming. I was going to say Impact Impact Homecoming. Homecoming. Impact Homecoming. There's five shows before we announce our first loser of uh, Wrestle League. So there's so much to play for. And this guy's already in front after Survivor this, Series and NXT. This guy is well at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I, I gave it a core. I gave it four out of five. I well think, done, Raw. I think that is fair enough. And I also would have given it a core. I thought it was a, uh, yeah, a very, very fun show. But that's all we've got time for before you start reading out the TLC matches. There are already two matches, three including the kickoff. Well, I think it's kickoff. Well, of course, go over to beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk to get your free case of craft beer and click the videos here to catch up with the latest awesome wrestle talk things and this button will take you to subscribe to the podcast version on itunes i've been ollie davis this has been luke owen and that was rambling